Good morning, students. Today we're doing lesson 7.3, solving sy simple system of equations, systems of equations by substitution. So the past two lessons we have learned how to solve systems by graphing. But let's say you were doing one by graphing and your answer was going to come out to something like 31, 42. Well, you're not going to know how that that's going to come out that big and your graph may not be that big. So we're going to learn some other ways to solve systems. And today, the way we're learning is substitution. That's why I underlined it up here. Okay, and then we'll learn some other ways too that we'll talk about more later. So we're going to jump right in and we're going to solve this system of, of this. We're going to solve this system by substitution. So example one. We're going to have two equations just like before x plus y equals negative 4 and x minus y equals 10. Okay, so before we would have maybe made t charts and made a graph and see where these two intersected, but I'm going to show you a different way. Okay, so we're first going to take you can do this with either equation, but I'm going to use this first equation and I'm going to change it so that it is just x equals. So instead of y equals like we do for slope intercept form, I'm gonna do x equals. So I'm gonna minus y, and that gives me x equals negative y minus four. Okay? So you can do it the other, you can do it with y equals also, and I'm gonna show you when the, in example two where I do that. Okay, so I'm just picking the x because it was the first one in that equation. Okay, now I'm going to take what x equals this part. I'm going to take what x equals, and I'm going to, in the second equations, I'm going to put that in place of x. Okay, so that's where the word substitution comes in, right? We're going to substitute in what x equals. Okay, so I'm going to take that, what I just boxed in red, and I'm going to put it right here. Okay, so now I'm going to write it down over here. So I have minus y minus 4, or negative y minus 4, minus y equals 10. Okay, so do you see what I did? This, this problem, x minus y equals 10, so that's this problem, right? And instead of x right here, I put in the negative y minus four. Okay, so I put in this part over here. Okay, now I'm gonna solve that. Okay, so I'm gonna add my like terms, negative y, negative y make negative two y minus the four equals 10. Now I'm gonna add four on both sides. So I get negative two y equals 14. Let me move my thing over. And now I divide by negative 2, and I get y equals negative 7. Okay, remember your answers to systems are um, ordered pairs. So if my order, I'm going to write the answer up here. If my ordered pair is x, y, then I just figured out the y, so negative 7. Okay, now I need to figure out the x. So I can pick either equation, okay, but I'm going to pick the first one. So I'm going to rewrite it right here just so that you see what I'm doing. And I'm going to put this in for y. So instead of y up here, I'm going to put negative 7. And now I add 7 to both sides, and I get x equals 3. Now I know my x, so I put it up here, and there's my answer, 3, negative 7. Okay, and I can check this work, so I'm going to go back to my two original problems, okay, and I'm going to check it. So x is 3, y is negative 7, and so 3 plus negative 7 is negative 4. So that one checks, and then I could do my second one, and I can check this one also. So I get 3 minus a negative 7 equal 10. Well, minus a negative means plus a positive, so I have 10 equals 10. So that one checks also. So both of my problems checked. Okay, it might have seen, seemed a little bit confusing here, so I'm going to do a second one with you, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna ask you to do one on your own, 
Okay, so let's go on to example two. So really pay attention here. And I'm going to be using some color coding just to help you see what I'm doing. Okay, so here's the problem. X plus Y equals five and three X plus Y equals seven. Okay, so what you do, what you need to do with yourself is say, okay, I need to get either X or Y by itself. It doesn't really matter which one. Um, so which equation works best with that? Well, both of these have a whole bunch of just single ones. Um, I'm just gonna pick the second one because that's what the um, example did in your book. So I'm gonna take this problem, okay? And I am going to get Y by itself. So in order, I'm gonna leave these right here because I want y'all to see the originals. So I'm gonna take this problem and I'm gonna get Y by itself. So I'm gonna minus three X and I get Y equals negative three X plus seven. Okay, that is what Y equals. This is what Y equals. So I'm gonna put it in green, right? And now I'm gonna go back to the equation that I did not change. So do not use this one because that's the one that I changed. I'm gonna use this top one right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna write it down over here. I'm gonna use some different colors here real quick. X plus Y equals five. Now notice I put the Y in green because I want you to see that that's what this is. So instead of Y now, I'm gonna put in negative three X plus seven. Okay, so now I'm gonna write that in here. I'm gonna have X plus negative three X plus seven equals five. So do y'all see what I did here? I took this Y and I took what this Y equaled and I put it in the place of Y. Okay, and then everything else stayed the same. So the X is the same, the five is the same, what I changed was the Y. Okay, so now I'm gonna solve this. I'm gonna add my like terms. So X plus negative three X is negative two X plus seven equals five. Now I'm gonna minus seven and I get negative two X equals negative two. Now I divide by negative two and I get X equals one. Okay, so I have my X. Okay, now I'm gonna go back and find my Y. Okay, so I can use either equation, but I need to always go back up here when I'm using a new equation, okay? So I'm gonna use the top one. I'm gonna use the X plus Y equals five, and I'm gonna write that right here, X plus Y equals five. And instead of X, I'm gonna put in this number, right? I'm gonna put in Y, I mean, one, sorry. So I have one plus y equals five, subtract one, and y equals four. So there are my two <coughs> x and y, and remember you have to put it as a ordered pair. So there's my answer. So if I were to graph this, then that's what I would get on my graph where the two lines intersect. So I would have two lines going, right? and where they intersect would be one four. Okay, and I would, could show you that example also, but um, I think that you understand what I'm getting at how to do that. Okay, now it's time for you to do one. So I'm gonna label this one on your own because it's actually not a problem in the book, uh, an example in the book. So we're gonna do X plus Y equals five and X minus Y equals three. Okay, so I want you to pause this, the video, try to do that one on your own. That's very important that you try it on your own. If you get stuck, then come back to the video and when you see what I'm doing, then hit pause again and try to finish on your own. Okay, so go ahead and hit pause now. Okay, everybody should be back. Okay, before I start solving this, <clears throat> I am going to tell you the answer, okay? So the answer is, and hopefully you're not coming back to, because you just got stuck a little bit, but that's okay if you did. The answer is four one. Okay, so let's go through and see how I got that answer. 
So a lot of y'all might pick a different number to get by itself or a different variable to get by itself. So you can choose this X or this Y or this X. I would not choose this Y because it has a negative in front of it. So that makes it more complicated to get rid of. So I don't know, I'm not in front of all y'all, I can't say which one did y'all pick. So I'm just gonna pick the X on this one, okay? So I'm gonna get X by itself. Okay, first let me put these in a box. This is my original problem. I don't wanna mess with those, I wanna be able to see what they are. Okay, so if I get X by itself, I'm gonna minus Y. I get X equals negative Y plus five, okay? Now I'm gonna substitute this into the X on the second problem. So I have, uh, I'm gonna rewrite it over here. And now instead of X, I'm gonna put in n negative Y plus five, and then I have another negative Y equals three. So that's gonna give me negative two Y plus five equals three. Let me move this up a little bit. And now I'm gonna minus five on both sides. I get negative two Y equals negative two. Divide by negative two and my y is one, okay? And if you look back up here at the answer, that's right, right? I have y is one. Okay, now I need to find out what x is, so I'm gonna go to the, sec the first equation, the x plus y equals five, and I'm gonna put in this one for y. So I have x plus one equals five, and I'm gonna minus one, I get x equals four, okay? Um, Okay, so those were my answers. So I, my answer is four, one. Now, if you chose a different one to get by itself, that's okay. Okay, it will still work. The problem is that if you got Y by itself on this one and you substitute it in for here, that negative sign in front is gonna make it a little bit harder to solve. And that's probably why in the very first equation, why they went with X equals instead of getting the y by itself because they want it to make it um, easier in the end. They don't want to put it in front of a negative. And remember, if you do that, if you put like a whole thing in front of a negative, you have to distribute that out to everything in there. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to the last example. And this one I'm going to do with you uh, just because it has fractions in it. And I want you to know that you are you will have fractions in your life, and so you need to be able to do fractions in um, algebra class also. Okay, so here's the problem. X equals 4Y, and 3X plus 2Y equals 8. So now I'm going to take these two equations, and I'm going to substitute. Well, this one's really easy to start out because I already have something substituted here. I already have X equals 4Y. I don't have to get anything by itself. So this is what X equals. So I'm gonna move that, hold on, I'm gonna change that color there. I'm gonna move that over into the second equation. So now I'm gonna write out the second equation, 3X plus 2Y equals eight. And this part, 4Y, is gonna go in place of X. So I'm gonna have three times 4Y plus 2y equals 8. Excuse me. Okay, 3 times 4y is 12y, plus 2y equals 8. That's 14y equals 8, and now I divide by 14. So you see how I ended up with a fraction? Okay, don't leave it like that because I can simplify that, right? These can both be divided by 2. So I get y equals 4 sevenths. So on my answer, I'm gonna have 4 sevenths as my y, but I need to figure out what my x is. So I'm gonna take this answer, the 4 sevenths, and put it up here to find out what x is. Okay, and that is the original equation. So I have x equals 4 times 4 sevenths. So you see what I, whoops, you see what I did? I took the four sevenths and put it in place of y, okay? So now when I multiply those, I get x equals 16 sevenths. And that is the answer, that can't be reduced anymore. So over here, I'm gonna write down the answer of 16 sevenths, and that's my answer, 16 sevenths and four sevenths. 
Okay, so on your homework, I try not to give you too many where they are fractions, but I do want to give you at least one. Okay, so you might have one that's a little bit harder, but for the most part, they're not gonna be fractions. Okay, you may have fractions on your test though, so be careful. Okay, so that's it for today. You're just gonna practice a whole bunch of the substitution. If you need to, if this maybe wasn't your thing, you're not sure about how this was working, then you can look through your book um, on lesson 7.3 to see how they did it. Okay, that's it for today.